There is a moment in every race season where things get real. In the 2023 Canadian Rally Championship, we've had three rounds and three different winners. No one has been able to claim dominance over their competition. But this is the moment when things change. The downhill run to the title begins here. Rally des Filles Petite Nation sets off the first of four events in less than three months. Win here and you're in the driver's seat. Falter and your time between rallies is spent catching up. Multiply that stress with a long 20 stage event featuring a brutally unforgiving second day and you have the makings of a game changer. For the rest of us, sitting back in our comfy armchairs, this is bound to be a good show. Rally des Filles starts now. Welcome to Montpellier, Quebec, home to Rally des Filles. Tracing its roots all the way back to the Criterium Rally, this is the oldest battleground in the championship, and the teams are eager for the challenge. 33 teams will face 220 competitive kilometers over 20 stages. Rally des Filles presents an incredible variety of roads. Long, short, technical, fast, wide, narrow. Every driver will find a stage that suits their style here. The Canadian Rally Championship is presented by Subaru Canada. Fresh off a win at Rally Bay de Chaleur, Joël Levac and Laurence Fanny Lestage will lead the teams into the stages. Rally des Filles starts with a challenging 14-kilometer long stage close to town, then moves to a gravel pit to give the fans a chance to get close to the action. Levac sets the early pace, winning stage one. Alexander Moreau and Ian Guité are holding a one-point lead in the championship, and they know they need a strong finish here to remain ahead of the field going into the second half of the season. They are off the pace on the first loop with an ignition problem, struggling to keep their stage times in the top 10. For test racing's Marc-André Brisebois and Marie-France Demeray Trepignier, their skill, enthusiasm, and dedication have never been in question. But since their run to runner-up status in the 2021 championship, what's been missing has been consistency and luck. If they can turn that around, they could also challenge for the points lead. With the newfound speed and reliability of their R5 Fiesta, Jean-Sebastien Besner and Yvonne Joyal have their sights on their first national title. It has taken Besner virtually no time to find his rhythm in the new car, and top three stage times throughout the first loop are the result. The defending champions, Jérôme Mailloux and Philippe Poirier, have had a rough start to their year. They finished third at Rally Parsneige, missed the Rocky Mountain Rally, and then finished seventh at Rally Bay de Chaleur. They need a strong finish here to put their title defense back on track, but a shredded tire and subsequent suspension damage takes them out on stage four. The penalties will knock them down to 26th on the restart. Although veterans of the stages in America, Arik Bielobjeski and Aris Mantopoulos are entered in only their second Canadian rally this weekend. After a slow start on stage one and two, they are rapidly picking up the pace, posting top five stage times in their unique, custom-built, six-cylinder Subaru Impreza. Vincent Trudell and Michael Chepchek are setting the pace to beat in the production all-wheel drive class. Trudell is well on his way to a class championship, with two wins and a second place through the first three events. On the other hand, Trevor Pugnier and Ryan Rouleau missed the first half of the season, but they're ready to challenge for the class win this weekend. In two-wheel drive, the stage is set for a battle royale. The class is stacked with fast teams, starting with 2022 Rally Day Fee winner and current points leaders Chris Greenhouse and Ryan Scott. Mathieu Leblanc and Eric Dubé are looking for a repeat of the showdown they had with Greenhouse and Scott at Rally Passneige, which went right down to the final stage and ended with the Honda on top. Both Greenhouse and Leblanc are well-matched opponents, and it could go either way. Added to the mix are Francis Belay and Danny Millet. They won the class at Rally des Filles in 2021 and are considered to be specialists on these roads. Although they aren't in the hunt for the championship, they are definitely a threat for the win this weekend. At the top of the standings, Joël Levac and Laurence Fanny Lestage are sending the same message they did at Rally Bay de Chaleur, sweeping the first loop of stages. But Besner is right on his tail. Levac leads Besner by just over a minute after six stages. Brisebois is a further minute and a half behind in third. Trudel comes out on top of Pugnier in production all-wheel drive. Greenhouse leads Belay in two-wheel drive, with Leblanc third. The teams head in for the first service before more stage action when we come back. 
Welcome to your 20-minute high-intensity workout. Pick up the cadence, regulate your breathing. Get ready for a climb, let's go. Okay, push it on the flats. Pick a number and get after it. Recovery in three, two, one. The all-new WRX. We're back at Rally Defeat Petite Nation. The teams have returned to downtown Montpellier for the first service. First stage, uh, a little bit rusty for me. So uh, we have a good run, but uh, more in the break. So, but after pace increase, increase, so uh, everything is running well. Today it's a lot of stage, but very small. Uh, and tomorrow we'll have a big four stage, but 100 kilometers and four stage. So that will be a hard day tomorrow. Been uh, pretty good adapting my driving to the to that new car. It's so fun to drive. Unfortunately, Jérôme and Alex had some uh, some issue. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, dès la première spéciale, euh, j'ai eu des problèmes de puissance. Euh, J'avais juste trois, trois cylindres qui fonctionnaient. Fait que, euh, je doutais que ça serait un coil pack ou une bougie. Fait que c'est vraiment un coil pack qui est cassé. Fait que les gars vont, sont après de tout changer ça. Puis euh, être bon pour attaquer de nouveau là, dans les prochaines spéciales. Bonjour, par le char, guys. We had like bad rallies just because mechanic failures, like mechanic is mechanic. It's not that I don't trust Matt, I know he does the, his best too, but sometimes it happens, but it gives straight confidence to have a car that is top shape today and I could actually express myself and push. So I'll be, I'll be aim, I'm aiming for a podium today. Everybody thinks that it's some kind of a crazy motor in it. It's actually a stack Subaru 86 motor from uh, Subaru Outback. We just put it in and that's, that's how it drives. It revs all the way to 70 to 200. <laughs> LeBlanc struggled through the first loop with fuel delivery issues, keeping him from challenging Greenhouse on straight pace. For his part, Greenhouse couldn't be more pleased. Morning loop went great, went even better than we thought it was gonna. We knew that we were the favorite coming in here and uh, we pretty much proved on the morning loop. We uh, stretching out to a nice big lead already. Very happy. Gotta keep watching Matthew LeBlanc. He and I are uh, uh, always a, a good battle, but uh, Francis Belly looking very good right now. Definitely got to keep an eye on him. Well, I got a lot of respect for Chris Greenhouse. I think he's a very good pilot, so it's an honor for me to hear that. I don't know if I'll be able to catch up on him. That's not the objective right now. We'll let the rally pass a bit and see if uh, there's an opportunity to catch later uh, later today or tomorrow. Rally Day Fee is unique in the Canadian Rally Championship for the sheer number of stages oriented towards spectator access. The next loop is two stages that run straight through the heart of Montpellier, and the fans are out in force. Rally leaders Joel Levac and Lawrence Fanny Lestage start the loop with over a minute to their nearest competitors. But something is off from the start of stage seven. The engine note has changed. And despite pushing hard, Levac is unable to extend his lead. They make it through the stage clean and the fans are impressed, but they should be faster. With the ignition problem sorted out, Alexander Moreau and Ian Guité are looking to fight back up the leaderboard. They're in fine form through the first section of the stage but there is an old saying about these short spectator stages. You can't win the rally there, but you can lose it. Why? Driver and co-driver are okay, but the clock is ticking to get the car back on its wheels. Besner and Joyal find themselves heading into a junction turn equally hot, but Besner's experience here shines through. Realizing he's going to miss the turn, he doesn't even try and avoids hitting the car collecting rock on the outside of the turn. Taking to the grass here costs Besner a couple of seconds, but it's a much lighter price to pay than the potential alternative. With his test racing Subaru fully repaired, Jerome Mayu is on max attack. He and co-driver Philippe Poirier post the third fastest time on stage seven and then win stage eight outright showing the pace that earned them the 2022 championship. Back with Moreau and Guité, time is still bleeding away, but they managed to get the car upright and have a chance to get back in the fight. They managed to get running again just ahead of Marc-André Brisebois and Marie-France Demaray Trepigny. Seeing the test racing Subaru fully up to speed, Moreau moves over to let Brisebois pass. Brisebois loses no time, still holding third. 
Bielobjeski and Mantopoulos also show the skills to go the distance, running through the spectator stages smooth and steady, maintaining fourth through the loop. Now up to fifth overall, Trudel and Chefchuk open up their lead in production class by another handful of seconds through the loop, now a minute 20 ahead of Pugnier and Rouleau. In two-wheel drive, the tight battle is moving the class leaders up the field. Greenhouse and Scott are up to sixth overall. Keep right over crest, 30. Late, four left, half long. Opens over crest. Kink, 70. And a clip, very late, four right minus. And Belay and Millette are a minute behind them in seventh. LeBlanc and Dubay are further 40 seconds behind, in tenth overall. Moreau and Guité finally managed to limp their injured Subaru to the end of the loop, but the damage to their rally is extreme. They're down to 21st place. After eight stages, Levac still holds the lead on time despite the engine troubles, with Besner, Brisois, Bielobjeski, and Trudel rounding out the top five. Greenhouse leads Belay and Leblanc in two-wheel drive. But with the sound of Levac's motor getting worse, it turns out that leaderboard is already moot. The XWRC Mini retires with engine failure. It's bad. The engine go in three cylinder, so we have issue with fire. So, but we can fix. So that will be the, the last stage. Moreau will continue, but faces a huge challenge to get back in the points. The notes were really moins moins puis slow puis c'était pas encore assez là l'arrière a parti là j'ai pas pu la retenir là on a comme roulé sur le côté on a réussi à sortir fait que pas trop de perte de temps j'ai donné de voir à mes mécaniciens là mais je confiais que on va réparer The day isn't over yet there's another tough loop of stages coming up We're barely halfway through the first day of competition here at Rally Day Fee and the stages are about to get tougher with Levac out due to engine failure, Jean-Sébastien Besner and Yvan Joyal now find themselves leading a rally for the first time in their new car. They've already settled into a smooth and fast rhythm, and it serves them well, increasing their lead by another 30 seconds over the next four stages. Marc-André Brisbois is no fool. He knows the mission now is to maintain his position and earn as many points as he can. He and Marie-France Demaray Trepanier refuse to get drawn into a costly battle, playing the long game. Bielobjeski and Mantopoulos originally planned their entry into Rally Day Fee as a chance to run some new, interesting stages and to try writing their own pace notes for the first time. But now they find themselves in the hunt for the overall podium. They don't let their current success go to their heads and maintain a safe pace through the afternoon stages. Now up to fourth, production class leaders Trudel and Chefchek are pulling away from Pugnier and Rouleau, spurred on by a new goal, the overall podium. Through the next four stages, Trudel manages to keep the gap ahead down to under a minute, in striking distance should any of the top three falter. Pugnier knows that Trudel's ambitions could work against him, so he plays it smart through the loop, maintaining his position. The competition continues to run hot in the two-wheel drive class. Greenhouse and Scott have over a minute on Belay and Millette, but the pace of both teams continues to increase. Greenhouse wins stage 9, 10, and 11, but only by a few seconds each. Belay wins stage 12, pulling back a couple of seconds. Stage 13, Greenhouse. Stage 14, Belay. The excitement ratchets up with each passing kilometer. Unfortunately, Mathieu Leblanc and Eric Dubay are unable to join the battle. Their Honda dies on stage 10, and they are unable to rejoin the rally. The drama at the top has opened the door for some rising stars. Gabriel Monette and Hugh Bergeron have made no mistakes, and are now up to 8th overall. And the third test racing Subaru, with William Partiak at the controls and notes called by Manuel Arsenault, is now up in the points, ninth overall. Finishing out the day, Jérôme Mayu and Philip Poirier begin their climb back up the ranks, winning three stages in the loop outright. At the end of the first day at Rally des Filles, Besner is in a solid lead. Brisebois and Bialobjeski round out the top three. There's still over 100 stage kilometers to go at Rally des Filles.
Stay with us. Welcome to your 20-minute high-intensity workout. Pick up the cadence, regulate your breathing. Get ready for a climb, let's go. Okay, push it on the flats. Pick a number and get after it. Recovery in three, two, one. The all-new WRX. It's a brand new day at Rally Day Fee Petite Nation. Round four of the Canadian Rally Championship. The Canadian Rally Championship is presented by Subaru Canada. Although there are only four stages today, don't be fooled. Nearly half the stage distance has yet to be run, and this includes two passes of a new 42 kilometer long stage. With a lead of over three minutes, Jean-Sebastien Besner and Avange Royale know that the mission now is to manage risk. This is where their combined experience shines. It takes maturity and patience to know when stage wins are important and when it's more critical to maintain a margin of safety. These are skills that this team have mastered. Age isn't necessarily a factor in this kind of wisdom. Marc-André Brisebois and Marie-France Demaray Trepignier know that chasing Besner or fighting for stage wins could undo all of the progress they've made this weekend. A strong focus on the long game leaves little doubt that they will eventually earn a title. What started as a fun drive to practice pace note writing has turned into a chance at spraying champagne for Bielobjeski and Mantopoulos. But they're taking it easy on the first pass of the 42-kilometer GML stage, unsure of their pace notes. Trudel and Chefchek, leading the production all-wheel drive class in fourth overall, are much more comfortable with their notes, and their pace is on point from the first kilometer. By the end of stage 18, they've closed the gap to third to 40 seconds. Greenhouse and Scott are also on a tear in the two-wheel drive class. Greenhouse is an expert at longer stages, and finding his rhythm on the first pass of the GML stage nets him an additional 45 seconds on Belay and Millet. Belay tries to respond on the next stage, but Greenhouse still has more left in the tank, taking another 10 seconds out of Belay. The duel is opening up the gap between Belay and Kurt Duddy and Danny Houdon, who are holding third place in the two-wheel drive class. More sure of their notes, Bielobjeski and Mantopoulos attack the second pass of the GML stage with confidence, and manage to beat their first pass time by 90 seconds. Trudel and Chefchek don't know this, and think they smell blood in the water. They crank up the pace, but their production class car can't take the pounding. A broken wheel leads to suspension damage, ending their rally. How long to go? About 22 kilometers, 23. And right nine, what's wrong? Is that? What's wrong? Something in the rear. Yeah, and crest 50 kings down, right eight. It did a set of food wrong, didn't hit anything really. Uh, it wasn't a puncture, so we kept on going. Then it went worse. Tried to make it all the way through the stage, but uh, we're a bit past halfway here. Well, obviously, there's no way we can make a 20k on like that. Back on stage, Belay and Millet pass the stricken Trudel, but it isn't long before their fortunes turn. Donc c'est ça, on a eu un dommage de la voie en avant qu'on croyait être une crevaison. Euh, c'est pas moi, ça s'est rapidement dégradé, puis probablement qu'il euh, y a une partie de la direction qui s'est détachée, puis la voiture a juste été euh, tirée dans le fossé. Du moins, ça m'a fait à notre, notre course. If you thought this would make things easy for Greenhouse and Scott, think again. Uh, no, I think it's just dirt in the wheels. Okay. The first hint of trouble is difficulty steering, 
But this is just a symptom of a much bigger problem. Flat through the finish. Repeat flat, six right plus. 130, flat crest, 300. And stop. Repeat six right, six left. Uh, looks like we lost the alternator of the belt. Okay. The car will only run for so long on the battery alone. Will it be enough to make it to the finish? If you want to talk about epic drives, the defending champions, Jerome Mayu and Philip Poirier, managed to climb from 26th back up to 9th overall. But Alexander Moreau and Ian Guité do even better, running all the way from 21st to 4th place, minimizing the damage to their championship run. 40 seconds. We're almost there, man. Yep, just got to get to the finish. At the start of the final stage, Greenhouse and Scott's rally is in serious jeopardy. Oh, no, no. It's dead. It's totally dead. Really? Yeah, it just died right there. But we're about to see an example of the sportsmanship that makes rally racing what it is. A push from Curtis Duddy and Danny Houdon gives Greenhouse and Scott a fighting chance. It still might not be enough, but it's an amazing gesture nonetheless. With Belay out and Greenhouse limping, Duddy and Houdon inherit the lead in the two-wheel drive class. Duddy's generosity isn't wasted. Greenhouse is still moving, though the time lost has knocked out any chance of the class win. Playing it smart from start to finish has earned Bielabjeski and Mantopoulos the right to stand on the podium. They bring it home in third place overall. Brisebois and Demaray Trepignier finally managed to put it all together driving clean through to second place. But the day belongs to Besner and Joyal. In only their second rally with the new car, they earn a well-deserved win at Rally Dayfi. Besner, Brisebois, Bielabjeski, that's your overall podium. Moreau manages an incredible fourth place finish, while Pounier takes the win in production all-wheel drive. Greenhouse limps through the final stage, but the hard work still pays off with second place in two-wheel drive, while Duddy takes the class win. The win bumps Besner into the championship points lead. Fourth place is enough to keep Moreau in the hunt in second, while Brisebois jumps up to third. Greenhouse extends his points lead in the two-wheel drive championship. Very, very happy uh, first place podium with the new car especially. So many times you can be close to it and uh, even if you're in the lead, anything can happen. So when you really make it, there's not much better things in life. Pretty happy with the results and that's what we were aiming for. We got it done, so very happy with the result with the team. They did amazing like usually. We didn't come with any expectations just to test, have fun, see how the roads are, how the events are run. And like you said, we're coming back with a trophy. It was really, really satisfying at the end. Chris Greenhouse looks down and out, but he doesn't realize he's actually finished second. And his championship is still very much alive. Yeah, it's, it's really tough to, to wrap up this with anything good after driving so well, getting up as high as fourth overall, and then uh, and not getting a good finish. Really a hard way to, to end what was such an excellent, excellent event for us, uh, for it to end so badly for us. Well, you know, Chris has always helped me out. When I started rallying, I asked him a lot of questions, and he's always been very helpful and always nice to everybody. So why, why can't we do that? I knew by giving him a hand that I'd probably lose that first place, but I was already super happy with second, and he deserved the win anyway with the speed he drives. Thanks for the helmet. Four rounds down, three to go. We're now past the halfway point in the 2023 Canadian Rally Championship. Next, the teams will head east to Rally Charlevoix, and the excitement level only goes up from here. We'll see you there.